Hi, my name is Anand Lada, Technical Sales Specialist at IBM. In this short video series, I'd like to introduce you to IBM Hadoop Distribution Big Insights, and in particular, focus on the value-added tooling that IBM provides on top of the base distribution to enable users to derive insights out of big data. Let me start by providing a brief introduction to Big Insights. Big Insights is IBM's Hadoop platform built on 100% open source Apache Hadoop, everything you see in the yellow boxes below, with value-added capabilities that provide business value at enterprise scale, everything you see in the blue boxes above. This next chart is a drill down on the value-added tooling built into Big Insights and some of the core capabilities that provide users with the ability to generate actionable insights. Capabilities such as IBM Big Sheets, a spreadsheet style interface to explore data in Hadoop, which is the focus of today's demonstration. Big Sheets is a lightweight browser-based tool for visually exploring and analyzing data in Hadoop. Think of it as Excel on Hadoop, with the ability to provide on-the-fly structure to semi-structured, unstructured data that you typically encounter in Hadoop. In addition, Big Sheets also includes the ability to do light transformations, filtering, and cleansing of data, and, and also be able to visually analyze the data so business users can start to derive insights with no coding required. One other nice feature of Big Sheets is the ability to take the structured data set and be able to export it out into common formats like CSV or turn that into a SQL table for further downstream SQL-based analysis. In this demo, we'll be analyzing some semi-structured JSON data that was collected from blogs and RSS feeds. This data set covers mentions about IBM Watson, the same one that you've probably seen in Jeopardy on the internet. But the concept can be expanded to other data sets in JSON format, such as tweets or data collected, for instance, say, from other social media sites. This is the Big Insights landing page that gives access to some of the value-added tooling within Big Insights. We're going to go ahead and click on the Big Sheets style, which takes us to the Big Sheets landing area. As you can see, you're, you're able to visualize some of the previously created workbooks, and you can also define a new workbook, which is what we're going to do next. You'll notice that you get a nice graphical interface to be able to browse all the files and folders that are within your Hadoop uh, cluster. And here we're going to go look for the Watson data set sitting under the blocks folder. So the moment I click on the blocks folder, it renders a raw view of all the records that, that are collected from this blog data set. And Big Sheets does that using a concept of a reader, which provides a veneer on top of this unstructured data. So we're starting by default with a line reader, but since we know we're working with JSON data, we can switch to the JSON array. And, and as you'll notice, there are several built-in readers that you can pick from, and Big Sheets also has a plugin architecture that allows you to you know, write your own readers and be able to integrate that. So you see, see like how you know, in, in with a very few number of clicks, we've now nicely defined a tabular structure to this data, which we'll be using for our further analysis. So I'm gonna call it Watson Mentions Analysis Sheet. And we're gonna go ahead and, and save out of here. And this kind of brings us into a more you know, workbook type interface similar to what you might have seen in Excel. And for analysis, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new workbook, which is where we'll be doing the rest of uh, the, the activity. So the way Big Sheets works is by adding you know, additional sheets that allow you to do some addition, manipulation and transformation on the data and essentially build out your workflow, if you will. So when I go ahead and click on this Add Sheets tab, you're presented with several different options of what you can do with data, all the way from being able to filter it, to joining it, to be able to limiting the amount of data that you work with. In, our, in, in this particular instance, since we're interested in analyzing the mentions for Watson by the top level domains of, of sites, we're going to go ahead and use a function sheet, which allows us to apply this URL host function that extracts the, the host portion of a URL. And, and you know that's essentially what we need. So we're going to go ahead and this function just takes a single parameter. So we're going to define that using the, the URL parameter in, uh, from our raw data set. 
Notice how you have this carry over tab, which enables users to be able to bring in additional fields that they want to carry forward for the rest of their analysis. This again is a neat feature within Big Sheets that allows you to eliminate the noise from this, you know, big data set and, and kind of be able to just keep the, the data that's of interest to you further down in your analysis. Since we're only interested in looking at the, the host and the mentions for what's sent by the host, I'm just going to bring just that field. Um, now you could see that how you know Big Sheets quickly rendered the process version of, of the URL host field. So if I kind of go back to my raw data set, you'll notice how the URLs have a you know, lot more data in them and, and you know we've just extracted the host portion of, of the of the content from that particular field. And the way Big Sheets gives this interactive feedback is by sampling the first 50 records and doing the processing in memory. Um, however, once we're done with defining our workflow and we save and exit out of the sheet, which is what we're going to do here next, you'll, you'll notice that you know, we're going to be presented with a message that essentially says, okay, you know, you've defined your workflow, but this workbook's never been run, which essentially means, you know, you want to now go ahead and run this on the entire data set, which is what we're going to do next. And what's happening kind of behind the scenes is Big Sheets is kicking off a MapReduce job that's going to go ahead and process the data from the entire workbook and, and you know, present us with the URL host information for all the records and not just on the first 50 record sample that we saw earlier. And, and you get sort of a nice progress bar on the top right hand corner that gives you, you know, visibility into where the job is at right now. And, and you can also see kind of, you know, how long the job took to run and, and where, you know, when it started and when it ended. And, and then if you click on the more field, it also gives you sort of information about how many records were processed. So it's, it's pretty neat with the feedback that, that it provides you. So now that we have these URL hosts extracted, our next uh, objective is to be able to aggregate this information and, and be able to see what the Watson mentions were like for each site um, and, and essentially find out what are our top sites for, for Watson mentions. So what better way of doing that than creating actually a chart? So I'm going to go ahead and create a bar chart and I'll you know give it the title of top 10 sites for Watson. And you know we want to just count the number of occurrences of, of you know data in that particular data set, and you know we want to sort by our y-axis, which is the number of occurrences, and we want to sort in a descending order since we want the top 10 sites. So again, you see how like it's in a nice you know with a few clicks you're able to now define a chart for what's in mentions by by site, and I, this essentially is going to now first go and, and do a, 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 the, the, the execution on a sample just like we did on the textual representation of the data. And when we kick off this job, it's now going to go ahead and run a aggregation MapReduce job on all the records that were in the data set to begin with and, and really provide us with this nice you know, consolidated view of the top sites for Watson mentions. Um, and, and as we, we see kind of this job progress, you know, we'll... Uh, eventually be able to see the information for all the top sites. And we're almost at the end here and, and see kind of the job, you know, processed and returned back. And again, you know, I'm of course running this on a virtualized, you know, environment, but depending on the size of the cluster, the timing of the execution is going to vary. But the key point is that a business user or business analyst type user can, with a few you know, simple clicks and using an Excel type interface, go from this messy JSON data set, you know, either it be tweets or, or blog information and be able to derive insights. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the top sites. So we see that ducknet, you know, blogspot.com is our top site with 68 mentions for Watson. And then we, of course, have some obvious candidates like IBM.com where, you know, of course, Watson is kind of uh, you know, presented prominently. But it's kind of interesting to note that, you know, IBM's not one of the top sites. You know, there's this other blog site where you tend to see a lot more mentions for Watson for this particular data set. So this hopefully gives you a you know, quick overview of Big Sheets. And if you'd like to learn more about Big Sheets and, you know, some of the other value added tooling within Big Insights, you can go to these resources to either be able to create your own environment to play with, whether that's on premise or on the cloud, and then also have these online tutorials that you can look at. Thank you for watching.